Krishna is a lover of Radha. He displays many amorous pastimes in the groves of Vrindavan. He is a lover of the cowherd maidens of Raj, the holder of the great hill named Govardhan. He is a beloved son of Mother Yashoda, the delighter of the inhabitants of Raj. And he wanders in the forests along the banks of the river Yamuna. Srila Prabhupada were very fond of this song and sang it just before Srila Prabhupada's lectures. In Allahabad and in Gorakhpur, Srila Prabhupada fell into a trance after singing the first two lines. And after some time, Srila Prabhupada came back to an external consciousness and said, now just chant Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada said that his song is a picture of Vrindavan. Everything is there. Srimati Radharani, Govardhan, Srimati um, Vrindavan, Yashoda, and all the cowherd boys. Jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Shara Bhakti Vino Thakur Ki Jai Jayo Radha Madhava Jaya Kunj Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Kunj Bihari Jaya Gopi Jana Vallabha Jaya Giri Varadhari Jaya Giri Varadhari Jaya Gopi Jana Vallabha Jaya Giri Varadhari Jaya Giri Dhari Jaya Jashoda Nandana Jaya Brajjana Ranjana Jaya Jashoda Nandana Jaya Brajjana Ranjana Jaya Jashoda Nandana Jaya Brajjana Ranjana Jaya Yashoda Nandana Jaya Brajjana Ranjana Jaya Jamuna Tiravana Chari Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Jamuna Tiravana Chari <coughs> Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Jamuna Tiravana Chari Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Jamuna Tiravana Chari Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Jamuna Tiravana Chari Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Yamuna Tiravana Chari Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Kunj Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Kunj Bihari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna 
Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jai Shri Radha Girdari Bhagwan ki Jai Shri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maya ki Jai Shri Giri Govardhan ki Jai Shri Nitai Gaur Chandra Bhagwan ki Jai Jagat Guru Shri Prabhupada ki Jai all glories to the assembled devotees, Hare Krishna. All glories to the assembled devotees, Hare Krishna. All glories to the assembled devotees, Hare Krishna. All glories, all glories to the lotus feet of Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga ki jai. Jagat Guru Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Namam Vishnu Padana Krishna Vastaya Bhutal Deshamati Mahavishnu Guru Samriti Namine. Namam Vishnu Padana Krishna Vastaya Bhutal Deshamati Bhakti Viranta Samriti Namine. Namaste Saraswati Vive Gaurani Pashayana Nivishesha Shubhavari Pashati Vishayana. Hare Krishna. Welcome everyone today. Now hopefully all of you can see this verse here that we are discussing today. Um, I was, yep, screen share so you can go to, go to see this. So we are now starting a new chapter, um, chapter number 28 and verse number one on Canto 3. So this is where we are continuing with the discussion and the instructions of Lord Kapiladev to his uh, very qualified mother, Mother Dev Huti. And uh, this particular chapter talks about how to practice or implement uh, the yoga of Sankhya uh, to attain the love of Godhead. The previous chapter, what we discussed was about the material world, the creation of the material world. We discussed about how the material world was created, the three modes of material nature, how, what was the first element that was that appeared in the world and how the subsequent elements appeared. So from the sukshma, from the subtle elements, all the other um, gross elements appeared. Like from the from mode of ignorance, uh, we've got sound and then all the sense of touch, sense of hearing, all these things appearing. So um, this particular verse now, we'll start with the, with the recitation of the verse. If you can repeat after me, please. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Yasya Yogasya Lakshanam Vakshye Sabi Jasya Nrupat Maje Mano Ye Naiva Vidhina Prasannam Yati Satpatham Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Yogasya Lakshanam Vakshye Sabijasya Drupat Maje Mano ye naiva vidhina Prasannam yati satpatham Shri Bhagavan Vacha Yogasya lakshanam vakshye Sabijasya nrupat maje Mano ye naiva vidhina Prasannam yati satpatham Shri Bhagavan Vacha Yogasya lakshanam vakshye Sabijasya nrupat maje Mano ye naiva vidhina 
प्रसन्न सत्पथम Divert towards synonyms, translations, and purports by Jagat Guru Shri Prabhupad. Jagat Guru Shri Prabhupad ki jai. If you can, please repeat after me. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. The personality of Godhead said, "Yoga sya of the yoga system, lakshanam description, vaksye." I shall explain. Sabi jasya authorized. Nupa atmaje, O daughter of the king. Manaha, the mind. Ye na, by which. Eva, certainly. Vidhina by practice, prasannam joyful, yati attains, satpatham the path of the absolute truth. The personality of God had said of the yoga system description. I shall explain. authorized or daughter of the king the mind by which certainly by practice joyful attains the path of the absolute truth translation the personality of god had said my dear mother or daughter of the king now i shall explain to you the system of yoga the object of which is to concentrate the mind by practicing this system one can become joyful and progressively advance towards the path of the absolute truth jai purport the process of the yoga process explained by lord kapil dev in this chapter is authorized and standard and therefore these instructions should be followed very carefully to begin the lord says that by yoga practice one can make progress towards understanding the absolute truth the supreme personality of godhead in the previous chapter it has been clearly stated that the desired result of yoga is not to achieve some wonderful mystic power one should not be at all attracted by such mystic power but should attain progressive realization on the path of understanding the supreme personality of godhead this is confirmed in bhagavad gita which states in the last verse of the 6th chapter that the greatest yogi is he who constantly thinks of krishna within himself or he who is krishna conscious it is stated here that by the system of yoga one can become joyful lord kapila the personality of godhead who is the highest authority on yoga here explains the yoga system known as ashtanga yoga which comprises eight different practices namely yama niyama asana pranayam pratyahara dharana dhyan and samadhi by all these stages of practice one must lo- realize lord vishnu which is the target of all yoga there are so many yoga practices in which one concentrates the mind on the void or on the impersonal but this is not approved by the authorized yoga system as explained by kapil dev even patanjali explains that the target of all yoga is vishnu ashtang yoga is therefore part of vaishnav practice because its ultimate goal is realization of vishnu the achievement of success in yoga is not acquisition of mystic power which is condemned in the previous chapter but rather freedom from all material designations and situations in one's constitutional position this is ultimate achievement of yoga practice jai 
श्रीला प्रभुपाद की जय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम अज्ञान तिमिरंध से ज्ञानंजन शलाकया चक्षुन्मील तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभस्त स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाती स्वदातिक वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्रीयुतापद कमल श्री गुरून वैष्णवांस श्री रूप सागर जात सह गण रघुनाथन्वित तम सजीव साधवैत सवदूत परिजन सहित श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पादान सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्वित हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंशा कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण प्रस्थाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नीति नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिने निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिने जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम दैवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर ये नष्ट प्रायशु अभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ठिकी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय ग्रंथराज श्रीमद भागवतम की जय जगत गुरु श्रा प्रभुपाद की जय जस्ट लाइक टू टेक अ मिनट एंड आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू डू फ्यू सम स्मॉल Yeah, one second, please. I'll be with you soon. Okay. Okay. No, here it is. All right. I think we'll do the screen sharing again. Okay, we go here. Okay. So the translation again, the personality of Godhead said, "My dear mother, O daughter of the king, Now I shall explain to you the system of yoga the object of which is to concentrate the mind by practicing this system one can become joyful and progressively advance towards the path of the absolute truth Now in this verse there are three words which are significant one is this which is called sabijasya which is authorized so if you see here shri bhagwan vacha yogasya lakshanam vakshaye sabijasya nrupatmaje mano yevaina 
vidhina prasannam yati satpatham. So the first word which is important is samijasya, authorized. The second word which is important in this verse, it is this verse, prasannam, means joyful. Okay. And the third one is satpatham. This is very important. The path of the absolute truth. So here, even the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Kapiladev, has informed his mother that what he is going to say is an authorized process okay, of realizing God. Now, as we understand, Srila Prabhupada also mentions there's another Kapil also, who is an imposter Kapil, who, whose system is not accepted. But here, Lord Kapiladev, the Srimad Bhagavatam describes the system of Sankhya Yoga, which is authorized. Uh, we'll discuss about this process also, this point too. Uh, the first point I would like to discuss today, we can meditate upon, is this joyful, this prasanna. Yeah, joyful. This is very important and very significant because of the importance of being joyful remaining joyful in this in this process in this material world uh, lord krishna emphasizes this point because everyone in this world wants to become joyful and remain joyful but this joyfulness <clears throat> does not remain forever there's a very important uh, concept and uh, uh, this is called uh, halad tapakari. This particular word, halad tapakari, is mentioned and elaborated in the purport of Canto 6, Chapter 24 by Srila Prabhupada. Um, it's a bit technical word, which says that halad, which is haladani shakti of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which you understand um, is also represented as a personal form of, of Radharani and the personal potency of Krishna, the superior energy of Krishna, the internal potency of Krishna. So when this internal potency of Krishna, it also manifests in the material world. But this particular potency by itself, if people want to enjoy, this creates tapakari. Tapakari means it creates a lot of pain and miseries to people. So it's very interesting. The spiritual potency of Krishna, which is the, his pleasure potency, in the material world, it creates tapakari, miseries to people. That is the reason why in this material world, every living being is miserable. And because of this misery, they are constantly hankering after happiness. And as we understand, we find happiness momentarily. But as Srila Prabhupada very correctly instructs us that this happiness is actually the absence of unhappiness. We don't know what real happiness is. This is revolutionary actually. If you go to see when Prabhupada mentions that what happiness we experience in the material world is actually the non-existence of unhappiness. So momentarily when unhappiness is not there, for that moment, we become happy. <laughs> and we think we are very happy. You know, this coronavirus will be over. If at all, it will be over. Um, then we are very happy. Oh, we're very happy. Now. After some time, again, a war will come. Again, we are not happy. After some time, again, some drought will come. And war is over, we are happy. Drought will come, we are unhappy. Foolishness goes on. A devotee, a very introspective sage. This is very important. And in Srila Prabhupada mentions this in the in the chat in the in the words of Bhagavad Gita. A very sage, a sage does not discriminate between living beings, you know. So the word is the in, introspective sage. That means devotees are very introspective. Brahmane Gavi Hastini, Sunicheva Shapakicha. Panditaha Samadarshinaha. Vidya Vinaya Sampanne. Brahmane Gavi Hastini. 
Shunichaiva Sapakecha, Panditaha Samadarshina. So this introspective sage, we devotees should be trained to look in internal, introspective, not external. Externally, everything is miserable. So we find our peace internal. By our virtue of our bhakti, we have to find out the existence of the super soul, Paramatma. At least the second stage we must realize. The Brahman, we may not be much keen, but it is automatically understood when you worship Krishna as Parabrahman or as Bhagavan. So here, this joyful prasanna is very significant. And there is a reason why Krishna mentions and, and elaborates this in one full verse. See, in chapter 9, um, in this chapter 9, the very initial part of this particular verse is mentioned. Here is the verse. Raja Vidya Raja Guhiyam Pavitram Idam Uttamam Pratyaksha Vaganam Dharmyam Su Sukham Kartum Avyayam You see? So here, Su Sukham, very happy. This is important. Very happy. So Raja Vidya means the king of knowledge. Here in chapter 9, Lord Krishna is now instructing Arjuna, his dear friend, about the king of education, the king of knowledge, Rajaguhiyam, the king of confidential knowledge, you see. So he emphasizes this point that he's going to tell him the secret of all secrets. Pavitram, which is the purest. Idam, this. Uttamam, transcendental. There's nothing bigger than that. Hmm? Pratyaksha, directly experienced. This is very important too. Directly experienced. Because this experience, a practitioner can directly experience. That is why this process is called, the Bhakti Yoga process is called the process of self-realization. Agamam understood dharmyam, the principle of religion. This is the principle of religion. Susukham, very happy. Kartum, to execute. Avyayam, everlasting. Another very significant point is that the process and this happiness is everlasting. We all want to be happy but we are looking for happiness which is everlasting. You see? So that is the reason why Krishna took this whole verse explaining this point that the importance of joyfulness and the everlasting joyfulness. So let's go to translation. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So Lord Krishna says, this knowledge is the king of education. The most secret of all secrets. It is the purest knowledge. And because it gives a direct perception of the self by realization, it is the perfection of religion. It is everlasting and it is joyfully performed. Here comes the important point. Now, it is joyfully performed. One can say, okay, I'm being joyful in performing devotional service, which is good. But after the process, if we are momentarily happy in this performance of this of this uh, devotional service, then again, we are trapped in the same material position, material world, whether it's happiness and distress, happiness and distress, heat and cold, duality existing. But the moment, even in this body that we live, even in this world that we are living, if we are attached to this transcendence, hmm, uttamam, this transcendental knowledge, secret of all the secrets, then that happiness that we derive, that happiness will have permanency in its nature. Because the nature of spiritualism, the nature of spirituality of Vaikuntha is permanence. In the material world, things keep changing. You, know, you see things, roads been constructed where there were no roads. Then that road is again broken, something more comes about. Then again something else comes about. You know? So many things keep on changing. And human mind is such that we want to keep changing things. Srila Prabhupada is very against this. So why do you want to change? You know, why do you want to improve? If this is improved, this is best. If something is working, why do you want to change? And that's why there's an there's a English maxim, you know, which says that if it's ain't broken, don't fix it. But the material commercial civilization 
the commercialism that we live in, uh, that we are so-called attached to for making money all the time. If you don't break things, we can't make something new. So we can't make money. <laughs> Idea is to make money. You know, if something is going smoothly, no problem. You break it, make money. I've seen it so many times. Even where we do our programs in New Lynn, the whole community center was very different. The whole roads were very different. And they were broken, constructed, again broken, again constructed, again broken, again constructed. <laughs> what is there now, after some time, it'll again be broken. We don't understand what is this going on. It was so smooth. We used to reach that particular place from point A to point B so fast, you know. And now there are so many signals, lights, this, that. It takes us 15, 20 minutes to reach that point, which used to be reaching in about three to five minutes. This is the problem. So we are always hankering for being joyful. That is right. But we want to have this everlasting joyful, joyfulness, everlasting joy. And that Krishna assures that by this king of knowledge, the most secret of all secrets, it is the purest of knowledge. And because it is, it gives direct perception of the direct perception of the self by self-realization, it is the perfection of religion, it is everlasting and it is joyfully performed. So this is one important point which we have to understand. You see, now how can it be joyfully performed? This is the instruction which Krishna gives. If you do perform devotional service, then you get happiness, it is transcendental, and by virtue of it, it is everlasting. Now, okay, once a practitioner starts to practice this, that he is practicing bhakti yoga, he is practicing, then in that process, how is it that it becomes everlasting? Because there are so many impediments. The moment you start practicing bhakti yoga, you've got so many problems, man. As it is, you've got so many problems. The coronavirus stops your income coming into the family. You have got family. You have to maintain the family. You know, you have to go to school, college, education, go to job, go up and pay something as a charity. You know, but most of us would think we are not beggars, man, that we want this kind of things from the government. But still, even if it is done, how much are they giving? Four ninety dollars. You see, that's generosity. For all so many years of your paying taxes, you get $490, which will give you some your basic necessities also that is not fulfilled. You have to cut somewhere. You know? So in all these situations, how can you keep performing bhakti without interruption? And that is everlasting. But how is explained in Srimad Bhagavatam? You see, if you go to see, then the Krishna consciousness process talks about what is Krishna consciousness? Yeah. So what is explained in the Bhagavad Gita? What to do? What not to do? It's a matter of instruction. Shishupanishad, Bhagavad Gita. Now, after you understand what to do, what not to do, then how to do it? That is explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Now, if there is no connection, if we do not study the what clearly, if you don't have clear conceptions of what, then it will be very difficult for us to understand how, how this is implemented. That is the reason why we should be warned of Srila Prabhupada's books. And very scrutinizingly we must study. Yes, we do not have time. We have our jobs, business, family to maintain. Even if, if you're not best, a brahmachari, there is best. But still there are so many issues with it. We have got interpersonal issues, so many issues going on and on. But somehow or other, if we are able to force our mind and force ourselves to sit in one particular place and read Bhagavad Gita, the what, sincerely, if in the association of devotees, that is best. If you've got right association, that is the best. Then after that, we can do how, that is Srimad Bhagavatam. You see, to do this regularly, one very important thing is needed. When I was a young, very young man, I must have been just out of my, before my teenage years. I remember one 
one uh, yoga person had come where i was living there you know so his followers he was a practitioner of pranayam is a big authority and uh, one of our a family family friends had invited us for his uh, his talks you know and they said that we have experienced this person's power he was from south india you know very powerful an old man but we could see he had a lot of wisdom and power and he said that somebody had cancer you know in the body suffering from cancer and this person would go and give him that person vibrations see with his hands on the body for some months like this he did regularly and that cancer went away so this particular family friends of ours were very influenced by him so they called us to say go and approach him you know i mean uh, listen to his class is coming here we organize this this classes for him please listen to him so i went there i must have been before teens i don't remember what all he spoke but one thing i remember very distinctly what he said he said that you must do pranayam he was talking about pranayam breathing exercises you know you must do this breathing exercises sitting in one place he said select a nice place in your house or wherever but go to that place again and again every day as you go to that place you will feel comfortable and he explained why you feel comfortable he said that the vibrations of what you are doing the vibrations are there in that place so if there are good vibrations you are experiencing when you're sitting there then you keep going there again and again then you enhance the good and positive vibrations i remember him distinctly now why is it relevant because many years after when i met my guru maharaj his holiness mahavishnu goswami maharaj maharaj would insist upon this point to say that you will not find time to read shrimad bhagavatam and bhagavad gita but somehow or other you must have one place in your home maharaj repeated and emphasized the same word and elaborated it very nicely so we could understand so he said that maharaj said that if you have one place in in your home where you sit and study bhagavatam then a mindset is such that this is my place for bhagavatam he said just like small children have what place to eat or place to study you know or even if you've got they're doing some uh, some mischief you say this is your place to sit down and not do mischief you know similarly if we sit in one place that place is our place for study bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam so even everyone in the house they know if you're sitting in this place that means you should not be disturbed and you have your book bhagavad gita prabhupad's books you know, shrimad bhagavatam have a pen and pad make notes underline things give cross references understand each word this word towards synonyms maharaj said is very significant prabhupad spent most of his time in this word towards synonyms because in this word towards synonyms the whole mood of the speaker is understood by shri prabhupad and that's where the as it is comes into play the word towards synonyms and that's why you will find that shri prabhupad many times spoke lectures only on one word of the verse you see so if you sit in one particular place the vibrations are very nice and that's that's where if you do it regularly you'll get confidence of doing things so from the what understanding what is krishna consciousness what is krishna instructing in bhagavad gita we can understand how it is implemented so the how of it is implemented is mentioned here like when is everlasting and joyfully performed the process of bhakti yoga is explained how it is everlasting in shrimad bhagavatam canto 1 chapter 2 verse number 6 the very important verse we must all memorize this verse many of us already know this verse it's very significant and this verse gives us the clue how it becomes everlasting let's see this verse savai pum sam paro dharmo yato bhakti radhokshaje ahai tukya apratihata yayatma suprasidati once again savai pum sam paro dharmo यतो भक्तिरधोक्षजे अहै तुक्कीय प्रतिहता 
yayatma suprasidati so again the word word sunanas so savai sah that why certainly pum sam for all for mankind so for all mankind paroho sublime dharma occupation see again the definition of dharma is not religion is occupation so whatever duties that we are performing this point will be discussed in the next verse which is tomorrow so who will give tomorrow's verse please he will be speaking on the prescribed duties with occupation so this is a precursor to the next verse dharma occupation yatah by which bhakti hi devotional service adhokshaje unto the transcendence ahai to ki causeless apratihata unbroken here comes unbroken ba yaya by which atma the self suprasidati completely satisfied so when one has got joy one is joyful and the joyful is of permanence in nature first thing that comes is that person becomes satisfied there is nothing more to be achieved okay and there is nothing to be given this is the point one understands my son is now coming but good we are doing screen sharing so no need to see me as it is not no point in seeing me we can see what prabhupada are writing here no okay so this is the point where after one is completely joyful and remains permanent one is completely satisfied so that do don't still don't come to the translation still remain in the what what synonyms so that certainly for mankind sublime occupation so the occupation is for mankind by which devotional service unto the transcendence causeless unbroken by which the self completely satisfied okay so that means in this verse we're talking about the the sukadev goswami is speaking about transcendence bhakti unto the transcendence by which if it is unbroken then one is completely satisfied okay this is more or less the meaning now let's come to the translation shila prabhupad ki jai the supreme occupation dharma for all humanity is that by which man can attain loving devotional service unto the transcendent lord now comes important point such service such devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to be to completely satisfy the self so there are three very important points here first is the supreme occupation dharma for all humanity so what is the dharma for all humanity occupation by which one can one, one man can attain to loving devotional service unto the transcendent lord this is the most important thing overriding factor the second point is such devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self so for self satisfaction when everybody wants to be self satisfied our bhakti has to be unmotivated when it is unmotivated then it becomes uninterrupted and when it is unmotivated it becomes uninterrupted at that point in time it will completely satisfy the self otherwise our bhakti if it is broken because it is motivated we are always dissatisfied so we are satisfied sometime we are satisfied sometime we got issues with people people have issues with us we got we can't concentrate all the time we are in and out of bhakti all the time so this is where the how is mentioned you see very very significant again to this point when we talk about bhagavad gita so bhagavad gita talks about what krishna is saying that this is knowledge is the king of education the most secret of all secrets it is purest knowledge and because it gives direct perception of the self by realization it is a perfection of religion it is everlasting it is joyfully performed right so we are trying to see how it can be everlasting so it becomes joyfully performed all the time we can remain joyful all the time that is given in 1 to 6 of shrimad bhagavatam which says that this bhakti process should be unmotivated if we are a good kirtankar we want people to come and listen to us this is wrong if you are a good bhagavatam reciter we will speak bhagavatam when we got hundreds of people surrounding us that is also wrong we are studying for to gain knowledge so we can prove to others that is also wrong this motivated our study of bhagavad gita the what and how of shrimad bhagavatam we should have only for two reasons one reason is 
for satisfaction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, for pleasing Krishna, and second, for our own purification. That's it. Mahavishnu Goswami Maharaj emphasizes this point very much, and it is so true. Because we are having all these kind of side motives, we are constantly juggling our relationships with people. We're changing things. We're fighting with our own selves. And this fighting takes away so much energy and time of ours so that our bhakti becomes interrupted. See, the, the definition of, of, of Krishna consciousness is that you always remember Krishna is first principle of Krishna consciousness. And second principle is never forget him. The second principle. So the difference between a bhakta who is a, a devotee which is, who is struggling and a devotee who is uttama, pure, is that uttama bhakti is constantly remembering Krishna. That's it. It's a question of remembrance of Krishna. You can sit in one place and remember Krishna. That is uttama bhakti. But the problem is that our concentration, our meditation for Krishna is interrupted. And here it is given why? Because we are motivated. The moment we are motivated, then our desires for doing something takes away our concentration from Krishna. It's very logical, very simple. But when we are doing our bhakti for those two reasons, one is for the satisfaction of Krishna and second for our own purification, that's it. No third motive. Then it becomes unmotivated. And because it is unmotivated, it becomes uninterrupted. It remains constant. So when any devotee does a service constantly for many years, keeping his mouth shut, that person is experiencing unmotivated bhakti. Yes, many times devotees come and go, which is again is a question. We should not be doing those things. Any service, even studying Bhagavatam is a service. Studying Bhagavad Gita is a service. We think it is not service. That is our problem. Cooking for Krishna is service. Wherever you can be. Serving Krishna, offering Krishna is service. You see? Being loyal to Krishna is service. <laughs> Being loyal to the teachings of the Acharyas in Sampradaya is a service. We don't consider this service, you see. That is our problem. We have got our own ways of thinking and our own ways of definitions of things. So, in these services, which is as per our occupation, as per our prescribed duty, as per our nature, if we perform those services and we are satisfied in our nature, then it becomes unmotivated, then it becomes un uninterrupted. Moment we're trying to do things which is not our nature, we're very fighting. But remember one thing, in Krishna's service, we have to do things which is not our nature too. Prabhupada taught us this, taught us this point. So what we do is, we do what is not our nature, understand, for service we are doing, for preaching we are doing things. But once it is done, we come back to our nature, we are, that will give us unmotivated and un uninterrupted service. And that is where we are completely satisfied with our own self. When we are satisfied with our own self, that is the peace with which we don't want to, we want to live our life. And that is the point, over a period of time, slowly, we will realize the Supreme Absolute Truth. And truthfulness is very important in Bhakti. It is very important for any living being, being truthful. And truthfulness, first thing is, we should be truthful to our own self. What we like, what we don't like. What is our nature? We have got Brahmana, Kshatriya, what tendencies have we got? Based upon that, we lead our life. That will give us uninterrupted and unmotivated bhakti. And that is will give us complete satisfaction. And this point in time, we get a glimpse of the existence of Paramatma within our heart. And in all the activities that we do, we can see Bhagavan form over a period of time. We can see that these teachings are that of Bhagavan, which are not different from Bhagavan. Then we can understand when Krishna says that I'm the taste of water. Rasaham apsu konteya. Then when we drink water, we see, ah, this taste is of Krishna. Prabhasmi sachi surya ho. I am the rays of the sun and the moon. When you see that, you say, yes, this is Krishna. 
everything else becomes superficial so we live in this body we are existing in this body which may be suffering or enjoying or are interacting with the modes of material nature but inside us this body we are aloof from the body and we are self satisfied we are constantly in the self satisfaction mode you see momentarily we can be attached to the body for the satisfaction all that but as long as we are honest to ourselves and truthful it remains unmotivated and un- un- uninterrupted we are back to our self of i'm not the body i'm a spirit you see this is how is mentioned here these are very important points before i conclude i also wanted to speak on a, f- a few short points which i have made on the process of astang yoga you see many times devotees or the practitioners of bhakti yoga i cannot generalize i'm very sorry i had this situation too myself to put it this way we misunderstand that astang yoga is not for us it's 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 not bhakti yoga it's not krishna consciousness answer is yes and no it is not because if it is not focused upon understanding krishna then it is not helpful for one's bhakti but if it is for to realize lord vishnu or krishna then the astanga yoga process is authorized as spoken by lord kapil dev and also by patanjali system but if people are going to just use astanga yoga the eight fold mystic for bodily comfort of other mysticism then it is not for us this point is very much highlighted by shila prabhupada in this purport the prabhupada said last whole chapter which we have discussed they speak about the astang yoga which should not be utilized for material sense gratification the eight siddhis that we get you know becoming uh, uh, you know creating a planet or controlling power of others you know we can we can uh, float lighter than the lightest heavier than the heaviest we can become all those things you know we can expand into eight different forms at, at one time all this processes all these are the effects of astang yoga but not the final the final is that of understanding krishna and that is why shri prabhupada says this astang yoga process is therefore part of vaishnava practice yeah prabhupada say why because its ultimate goal is to realize vishnu so as long as we perform astang yoga for process to realize vishnu then it is bona fide it's authorized now there are eight different practices of astang yoga it's very important to know this then we understand that why astang yoga may not be beneficial for us in this age of kali just knowing that yes it is not beneficial for age of kali bhakti yoga is beneficial that is good that's very good but if you want to remain permanence you have to understand why so the why is given here okay let's see the the processes the eight processes different processes the practices is yama niyama asana pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyan and samadhi see these are the eight processes eight practices mentioned of ashtanga yoga now these are elaborately discussed in the sixth chapter of bhagavad gita now what are this process let's see one yama yama meaning first thing controlling the senses so the first point of astang yoga is to control the senses but also give up sense gratification there's a very first point now we are struggling with that point as well as bhakti yogis after such a long practice we are not able to control our senses it's a big problem okay so first self is no second is niyam niyam meaning strictly following the rules and regulations of the process and they are very rigid you know which is mentioned in, in sixth chapter you must find a secluded place go to a forest lay close kusha grass you know close the eyes half close not fully close not fully open and one has to concentrate upon the tip of the nose yeah breathing in breathing out the air should combine together and suspend the breathing well all the best in this age to do this <laughs> okay there is niyam strict 
strictly following the rules and regulations. Then third is asana. Asana means the sitting postures. See, for us to sit in our lotus posture itself for half an hour is so hard. Man. <laughs> we change, we move this, do like this and all those things. How can we sit in one particular place for hours and days together? So practicing sitting posture, first three. Okay. Then the fourth, pranayama. This is the practice of controlling the breath. Yeah. As chapter six mentions, the breathing air, the control, moment you control your air, you can control your mind. This is very important. You should know this. Just by controlling the air, you can control the mind. If you can do pranayam a bit, you know, your health will be good also, and your mind will be controlled. But if you don't have time for pranayam, just go for a walk. Walking is best yoga practice, you know. At least for half an hour, 45 minutes, go for a walk. If you're chanting, take a japa beat and do japa walk. You know, it's very important. So pranayam, breath control. Then pratyahar. Now comes a very significant point. Okay? Pratyahar meaning withdrawing the senses from the sense objects. <laughs> Here we come. You see? So Arjuna is asking the question in, in the sixth chapter that one sense is so powerful it can take away the whole person's concentration and meditation. How to control it? You know, Chanchalam, Himana, Krishna. <laughs> Arjuna is asking this question. The mind is so flickering, man. And why mind? It's he's saying it is better to easy to control the wind, the storm, than to control the mind. It's so true. And our Krishna is repeating the answer. Asamshaya Mahabaho. He says, no doubt, Arjuna. That is absolutely right what you're saying. But he's saying, Abhyasena by Abhyasena. By constant practice, you will be able to achieve this point. And by detachment, he's saying. Vairagya na cha dushkritam. So by vairagya and by, and by constant practice, you'll be able to achieve this, this thing about sense control. So withdrawing the senses from the sense objects is pratyahar. After that comes Dharana, meditation. Concentration of the mind, sorry. Dharana is a concentration of the mind. When the mind is at this point in time, concentrating, don't allow it to flicker anyway. That's where we take the use. This, this point we do as bhakti yogis. Because we are trying to concentrate upon Krishna, that's why we take the name of Krishna. And we say we should be audible in speaking, in chanting the holy names. As we are audible, then we can concentrate. Otherwise, we cannot concentrate. Then we have got dhyan. Dhyan is a meditation. Meditating under the form of Vishnu, form of Krishna. And then ultimately, we are in samadhi. That is self-realization. So that's how this practice of Ashtang Yoga is very much a bona fide process of Vaishnava practice. Because as long as the ultimate goal is Lord of Vishnu, it's of Lord Vishnu. But today's world, people take bits and pieces for the sense enjoyment. Yeah. So this is the point that I point that we understood from this particular verse for today that we are discussing. Um, I'll repeat the translation again. Uh, we have short about the time, so I'll, I'll let to conclude now. Krishna is. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to see now. Here. <clears throat> Shri Bhagavan Vacha Yoga Sya Lakshanam Vakshye Sabijasya Nrupat Maje Mano Yenaiva Vidhina Prasannam Yati Satpatham. So, <coughs> translation The personality of Godhead said, My dear mother, O daughter of the king, <coughs> I shall now explain to you the system of yoga, the object of which is to concentrate the mind by practicing this system one can become joyful and progressively advance towards, excuse me, towards the path of the absolute truth. So we discussed the three important, uh, three, three points which stood out in this particular uh, verse. Uh, one was that of uh, 
subjasya, which is it is authorized, Lord Kapil Dev insists is authorized practice of Sankhya Yoga, which we discussed what is authorized as long as it is in the concentration of on Krishna. Uh, it is authorized, otherwise it is bogus. Uh, then it is prasannam, it's very joyfully performed. We discussed in Bhagavad Gita chapter uh, 9, where Krishna insists and spends a whole one verse on this point about being joyful in performing devotional service. And then we discussed how the joyful can be permanent in nature. So that's why we discussed Simad Bhagavatam 126, where we mentioned how one can remain joyful. It has to be, bhakti has to be unmotivated to become uninterrupted. We discussed about how it can remain unmotivated. Uh, that is a very significant point and to remain uninterrupted. And at that point in time, when we are performing devotional service, unmotivated, uninterrupted, that is when it remains. We are always very happy, Satisf completely satisfied. That is the point we discussed there. Yeah, completely satisfied. And uh, uh, with that, we come to the path of the absolute truth, Krishna. And at the end, we discussed how Sankhya philosophy, Sankhya yoga of the Ashtanga yoga principles, we discussed the eight processes which are, which are needed. We discussed how it is not important that we should be uh, uh, misusing it or misunderstanding it just for attending the Asta Siddhis, eight Siddhis, and it should be utilized for understanding Krishna. This is what I understood and I realized from this important verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. All of you are, are, are very are better students of Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. You would have your own realizations. If you'd like to share your realizations, I'll wait for a few seconds for you to say. Otherwise, we will complete the discussion today. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Please feel free. Okay, I can see only on Zoom if there's anything which people are seeing. So, Anyway, thank you very much. Jai Granthraj Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Shrimad Bhagavad Gita as it is ki jai. Jagat Guru Shila Prabhupad ki jai. Shishananta Koti Vaishnavinda ki jai. Itai Gauchanda Premanande. Hari Hari Bol. Thank you very much. Hari Krishna.